Oh yeah, we're gonna go take a drive and take one of the first uh, trips to a supercharger station. Uh, so this one's about a 26 minute drive. It's gonna take us a little bit to, uh, to get there. But uh, yeah, we're gonna use autopilot and see how everything goes. So if you haven't been in a Tesla before, you've got uh, your left hand side, you've got your speed, you've got your autopilot. We're currently preconditioning the battery because we're gonna go to that supercharger station. So it's gonna get that battery in a proper condition uh, to accept as much power as it possibly can. I believe the supercharger we're going to is a 150 kilowatt hour supercharger. Um, so not the fastest, there's the new 250, but uh, still a good pace. So you see you've got the cars coming across the way signs on the ground and everything is showing. You may see that person on the right hand side, you may not. Right. And then we've got our autopilot indication there so we can go ahead if we wanted to and do that hands-free Tesla magic uh, driving. Obviously once in a while you do have to go ahead and put your hands on the wheel. It's recommended to always have your hand on the wheel though uh, just in case something were to occur. But um, yeah, enjoy the ride and we'll go ahead and take a look at that supercharger. All right, so we're stopping at a stop sign and as you can see, we've got the stop sign on the right and we've got a pylon that is actually a fire hydrant up there, but hey, I guess everything is a pylon. And then just looking in the settings, we've got uh, things we shouldn't be doing when driving a vehicle, obviously. It's playing with your touch screen, but hey. Um, the big one in terms of driving is your autopilot uh, and your regenerative braking. So in autopilot, we've got settings like there, distance and whatnot. Those can all be changed from the buttons on the steering wheel itself. And then in terms of driving, you've got your steering mode and your regenerative braking. We've got it set to standard and to hold. So when we come to a stop sign or a stop light, uh, you can actually just let off the gas or the accelerator. Uh, and to bring the vehicle to a stop, it'll just put that power back into the, the battery there. And as you're driving, you can go ahead and see your energy usage and see how it is. And as you allow the regenerative braking to occur, you're going to see it go below zero where we've got the green section here um, but we're using quite a bit of power right now but you can swipe over and see uh, your average since it was last unplugged which is 308 which is quite a bit but it's using power to go ahead and precondition the battery there as well still getting used to the the screen so i may mess up just like i did there but hey it's okay So one of the quintessential, I guess, features of a Tesla or really any electric vehicle is that instantaneous torque. So we're going about 60 here. Um, and in a second, we're gonna go ahead and pull off just onto a side road, just so it's safe, of course. And uh, we're gonna really test that Tesla power. So just in a minute, we'll be back and uh, we'll go ahead and try that out. Okay, now as we approach this uh, stoplight, you'll actually go ahead and see that on the touch screen. It's gonna display the lights, which is kind of cool. You can see that they're green as they are in front of us as well. And turn. Okay, so speed limit is 70 here. We're going 36, but in a brief second, we'll go way past that. <laughs> Still, like every single time, makes you feel a little crazy that you just went that fast in that short period. Ah, crazy.
So in just a moment here, we're going to be going on the on-ramp uh, to the 401 East towards the Port Hope uh, Supercharger. And I'm not going to really rate the whole drive, but kind of, I guess, at the end when we get to the Supercharger, I'll go ahead and give a, a yay or nay and, and kind of just give some feedback on what I thought. But uh, for the majority of this ride, it's going to be silent. I'll maybe put some music in so you've got something to... Some, maybe some smooth jazz, some jazz flute, whatnot, into this uh, video to go take a look. But uh, other than that, enjoy. We're going to go into autopilot. Uh, don't have full self drive, so it's just autopilot, not navigate on auto autopilot, but it still does most of those features. Just doesn't change lanes and everything for us. But let's go ahead and, and test the car and see how it goes. Now we will have to get out of autopilot here for a brief second because it doesn't, like I said, have full self-drive. So it's not going to get out of that lane for us. But we'll go ahead and move into the middle lane because we're not causing any issues with traffic coming on and off. But uh, yeah, so enjoy the ride. As you can see, it's been pretty much an uneventful drive, which is a good thing, but uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, try some of the, the voice activated commands here. So one of the ones that uh, everybody loves to try is turn on seat bacon. Turns on the front and rear uh, heaters there. So let's go ahead and turn them all off because we don't need them to turn them all off, right? Uh, another one would be open glove box. Go. Um, if you text people, you can play music, uh, make phone calls. You can access a lot of things like uh, changing settings. So make it warmer in here. Increase temperature by 1.5 degrees Celsius. Make it a bit colder. Oh, did not understand that. Make it colder in here. And reduce by 1.5. Um, open autopilot settings. There we go. So just a quick way to get through to different things while you're driving to kind of keep that focus on the road. And if Elon Musk has it his way, we won't be touching the steering wheel or doing anything in the not so distant future. But uh, yeah, let's keep driving and uh, see what else happens. One of the things you can do with the vehicle when you're in any of the, the autonomous driving or semi-autonomous driving features you can go ahead and change things like your speed by scrolling up or down. And then you can change your follow distance by going left or right on the control knob there. Um, if you are getting onto a new road and there's a new speed setting, you can tap that to go uh, to your predetermined speed over the, the posted speed limit. So I've got it set to go 10 kilometers over. Uh, so that just adjusts that. One thing I found is as you're going to a slower speed road, the vehicle will lower your speed. But say you're going from a 50 to a 70, the vehicle will not automatically increase your speed, which is kind of weird. 
I don't mean there's a setting, I don't know, I haven't found anything myself. But if you go ahead and notice that you need to tap the speed limit, it'll go ahead and set it to that 10 kilometers or whatever you predetermined it to be over the speed limit. If you're in an uneventful car ride and you want to go ahead and impress your passengers, you can go ahead and uh, open that drawer of Easter eggs and uh, make some farts happen. That was a wet one. You can change it where it's coming from as well. You can do it on turn signal. So, that will impress pretty much anybody. That's what I've been told. Um, from there, you've got, you can do the Mars Lander, Land Rover, whatever it's called, Easter, Starman, and some features that uh, you have to be in park to do. Uh, and then you've got your web browser, your toy box, which is just where we were, your charging information, and energy used. So we can also look at the trip. So it's expecting us to be at 69% when we get there. Looks like we're probably gonna be a little bit lower. It is a little bit 11 degrees, a little bit colder outside. And uh, we can also go in and go into display. And I've got it set on percentage. You can set it to distance. So it's gonna go 370 kilometers at 72%. I personally like to have it on the percent because that's kind of static and as you put battery power back in, um, or sorry, energy back into the battery, it increases. But with kilometers, it's it's really like, I don't know, crap shoot on what it's going to be and, and it fluctuates all the time. So personal recommendation, go with percentages, uh, just easier to identify and see where you are as the, as the battery uh, is being used, right? And also another feature, or not really feature, but a tip. Say you're driving down the highway and your screen goes black. You touch the touch screen, nothing happens, nothing works. Uh, don't, don't panic, your vehicle's gonna drive no problem, it's gonna keep your speed, all that kind of stuff. But what you'll wanna do is actually, on your steering wheel, press the two buttons. About 15, 30 seconds, somewhere around there, the screen will show the Tesla logo, and then it'll reboot, you'll be back at it, just exactly where you were. Uh, the car's got the two computers, one that control all the functionality of the vehicle, and then you've got the one for the uh, display, which is called the MCU. Uh, one thing I did notice today is that your turning signals don't work when you're rebooting the display, so that's also something to keep in the back of your mind. You may have to stick your hand out the window and start flagging people down and say, I'm turning this way. I don't recommend doing that, but maybe if you have to do that, I guess. But... Just be like, Inflatable arm really too, man. Ah! While driving, if you pull down on the directions, it gives you obviously the overall look of where you are and where you're going. It also tells you what it expects your battery level to be when you get there, and then also what. Uh, if you did a round trip, what would your battery be at the round trip there, which is nice. But all the driving, anything, if you're doing longer road trips, uh, the vehicle's navigation will plan everything for you. Um, there is a program called a Better Route Planner. Some say it is superior to the built-in one, having you stop more, but for shorter periods, versus Tesla's where it has you stop shorter for longer periods. Or sorry, it should stop less for longer periods. Personal preference, though. So as you see, the green, we're using the regenerative braking to slow down the vehicle, but it's also sending that power uh, back to the battery. And if we were to look at the energy graph consumption, we 
dropped like a rock, but that's good. That's uh, the power being sent back into the battery. We're gonna go ahead and throw autopilot back on and get it to take this off ramp as smoothly as it wants to. And we gotta move over quickly. And something you'll notice as you drive around or if you own a Tesla, uh, that they put the supercharging stations in really convenient places for the most part, um, where they're close to restaurants or uh, washrooms, Wi-Fi, that kind of stuff. Just makes that time a little bit more enjoyable. And for this one, actually it was telling us to go around that way, but you can see where it is. So we can just go ahead and Take a little bit of an alternate route. And maybe stop at the Tim Hortons before we leave. Okay, and we can open the charge port from here. But uh, other than that, we're gonna go ahead and, and plug the vehicle in and we'll be back. So we're starting to charge. I still have some free supercharging kilometers, which is good. And then to get back to 90%, it's gonna take about 20 minutes to go ahead and pass that time. We'll see what we get uh, in terms of kilowatt hours. We'll probably stay around there, not much higher, just because we are at the top end of the battery. Yeah, so it looks like that's where we're gonna be. So we're gonna go ahead and Pass some time with uh, some beach buggy racing. I've actually never played any of these games. So I just said not to use the accelerator pedal or any of the, the gear stock, just to use the wheel. Absolutely horrible. I don't know how often I'd use a steering wheel to play this game. I believe it's dry steering, which is not really the best for your tires, but you're not really moving too much. You're just a little bit. Uh, so that's enough of that, but we've got Netflix. So we'll end the video here. Um, yeah, this is my first major drive to a supercharger station, and it was, like I said, uneventful, which is great. So stay tuned for other videos. If you haven't already, like the video, which would be nice. Comment, even better, but the best would be subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.